Uh, good morning, good evening, and good afternoon, and everyone, wherever you are. And welcome back to our second episode of Five Minutes Sarcoma Talk uh, on Onco Daily. I'm Shushan Hovsepian, a pediatric oncologist from Armenia, and I will be your host today. I'm excited to continue our journey uh, through the world of sarcomas. And today uh, we are honored uh, to speak with the renowned expert, Dr. Rajkumar Venkatramani. Dr. Venkat Ramani is the director of the Rare Tumors Program at Texas Children's Cancer and Hematology Center. He went to medical school in India and received his training in London, then in uh, California, has a master's degree uh, from the University of Southern California and MBA from the University of Massachusetts. And Dr. Venkat Ramani is the scientific uh, chair of the Children's Oncology Groups of Tissue Sarcoma Committee. So welcome, Dr. Venkat Ramani. Uh, thanks for having me, Dr. Hafs Sapian. It's, it's my pleasure to be here. Pleasure is all mine. So let's get started. Uh, as the scientific chair of uh, Children's Oncology Group uh, Soft Tissue Sarcoma Committee, what are the main challenges that you usually encounter in conducting clinical trials in patients with sarcomas, particularly within the cooperative groups? Uh, so the, one of the main uh, things, it's, it's both a fortunate and unfortunate thing because we don't have enough children with a uh, specific diagnosis. For example, rhabdomyosarcoma, sarcoma, we have about 400 patients uh, sorry about that. 400 patients a year in uh, US per year. So we, it's a good thing that not a lot of children develop cancer, but at the same time, it makes it very difficult for us to conduct clinical trials. Uh, as you know, we have so many questions we want to answer. For us, each clinical trial takes about a decade and uh, to conduct because of the rarity of the cancers, especially soft tissue sarcomas in children. So that is the major challenge for us. The other major challenge, of course, is lack of new medications directed towards rhabdomyosarcoma or children's non tissue sarcoma. So th those are the two challenges because this is a very extremely rare disease and there's not enough focus to develop medication specifically for these tumors. Yeah, thank you for sharing your insights. And uh, you mentioned about the lack of uh, new uh, therapeutic agents, but uh, delving deeper into that, uh, and specifically for rhabdomyosarcomas, could you share any recent breakthroughs or uh, novel therapeutic uh, targets uh, that are promising in rhabdomyosarcoma patients? So within the field of rhabdomyosarcoma, as most of your listeners know, uh, the, still the standard of care in at least North America is uh, vincristin acnomycin D and cyclophosphamide, the classic WAC regimen. And we have had this regimen since 1970s, and we haven't, even though it has undergone some modification, it doesn't change a lot. And with every decade, we have tried to add some new medications or compare with different medications. Still, the WAC seems to be the best regimen we have for abdomyosarcoma. Right now, we are focused on increasing effectiveness of low efficacy, but also decreasing toxicity. Is there specific uh, patients where we can reduce therapy? And is there a specific patient where we should intensify therapy? So the latest development, which I am excited about, is mainly characterization of molecular features in these tumors and prognostication of rhabdomyosarcoma based on molecular features. So we have the MCI, the Molecular Characterization Initiative from National Cancer Institute, where we are sequencing every patient with rhabdomyosarcoma in the country, as long as they enroll in the trial. And every month we are getting more and more data. And this data is being deposited in publicly available databases. So anyone in the world can get this data. We do whole exome sequencing, methylation, fusion testing, archer panel, and all the data is released to everyone to study. So our hope is we are on a threshold of uh, innovation in rhabdomyosarcoma where a lot more data is going to come and we are going to use big data to get achieve breakthroughs. With regard to specific medications, um, the latest one we are looking at is HDAC inhibitors. There are some exciting data in there. Um, of course, we are always looking at whether we can do cellular therapy, but it's not prime time yet to use them in patients. So those are the other modalities. I think we have reached the maximum of chemotherapy. Uh, so I don't think it's chemotherapy is going to improve anymore, a traditional chemotherapy. So we have to look at other modalities of treatment for abdomen sarcoma. Yeah, uh, that's uh, uh, actually uh, very promising to hear that uh, we are going to have new agents and 
uh, hopefully the research endeavors that uh, right now uh, we are doing uh, will uh, pay off. But uh, another thing regarding the chemotherapy, what is your opinion on maintenance therapy? So, so you had to take maintenance therapy in the context. Okay, so um, I know we are in European context, it seems to be helpful, but the backbone used in Europe is different from the backbone of chemotherapy used in the US. So we haven't, we actually tested, uh, the results are coming, we are presented in a poster format. We have tested maintenance therapy along with our backbone. At least our initial impression is that maintenance doesn't add to the 42 weeks of chemotherapy we deliver in uh, US. In Europe, the backbone is about 27 weeks of induction. In that context, adding six months of maintenance therapy seems to be helpful. Uh, but we still haven't proved that it's helpful in the American context or North American context, where we tend to deliver a lot more chemotherapy longer when compared to what the European backbones are. Yeah, that's very interesting, actually. And um, with that in mind, uh, moving to the relapse setting, what are the main challenges and advancements in this uh, patients? So uh, again, the same, we are stuck with the same thing, right? So VAC is our initial therapy. When they relapse, depending on the risk group, if they had um, only two drug therapy, which is vincristinactomycin D, we know that those patients tend to do better uh, with treatment. But if they have intensive therapy up front, especially if they have metastatic relapse, it's extremely difficult to cure these patients. Um, so we do not have any breakthroughs, recent breakthroughs in relapse. We are still using cytotoxic chemotherapy. Of course, we always try to enroll these patients on early phase clinical trials if we can so that we can learn more. But right now, we do not, unfortunately, have effective therapies for relapse patients with abdomen yeah, unfortunately, that's a real challenge, and especially if you are working in a low-middle-income country where you cannot enroll that patient into the clinical trials. And um, let's explore another aspect uh, regarding your uh, personal uh, experience. What led you to specialize in the field of soft tissue sarcomas? What or who was your inspiration? Uh, so I, when I did my fellowship, my mentor was Dr. Mascarenas. Uh, he is oh. another well-known soft tissue sarcoma plus solid tumor oncologist. So I learned a lot of stuff I know from him. Uh, plus soft tissue sarcoma is an area in need um, because as I explained in the previous five minutes that we don't have any effective therapy. So that's one of the things which attracted to me to soft tissue sarcomas. And of course, the varied presentation, even though it's called rhabdomyosarcoma, sarcoma, it can happen from head to foot anywhere in the body. The biology is very, very interesting. Plus, it's an area I need. So that's why I am I got attracted and I got considering on soft tissue sarcomas. Yeah, that's very interesting. And actually, uh, our next episode will be with Dr. Mascarenas. So. Oh, great. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Dr. Venkatramani, for sharing your expertise uh, and your knowledge. Uh, thank you for accepting our invitation. It's a great honor for me. And uh, with that, I would like uh, to bring this episode uh, to a close and join us for the next time for another insightful uh, conversation. Thanks. So thank much. you for having me.